Assalamu alaikum, my name is Jamie Turner. I'm 19 and from Leeds. I converted to Islam over two years ago now. I would like to share with you why I decided to become a Muslim. When I was younger, I was brought up in a non-religious environment. My mother would refer to herself as a Christian. She didn't actually practice the religion though. Uh, she had me christened as a child, but because she didn't actually practice a religion, I wasn't really taught or given a specific religious tradition to follow. Rather, I was um, free to choose uh, whichever perspective suited me best. Despite not being given a religious tradition to follow, I did think that when I was younger, I would say I believed in God. Um, I didn't think that it was sensible to say that our existence, the whole universe, came together by chance. And from a very young age, I was interested in the questions of God and the purpose behind our lives and so on. So I would say around the age of seven, eight, I would think more deeply about this question. And as a result, I, I would say I was a believer in God, but not actually believing in a particular religion at this point. As I grew older, I started to question the existence of God and, uh, and these kind of things. Uh, and I would think about this uh, a lot more and more as I got into high school and learned more about different religions and so on. Initially, I started to question the existence of God and became what you call an agnostic. So this is to not know whether God exists or not know whether he doesn't. I wasn't really sure. And I thought that at this stage in my life, this is the most sensible position. After acquiring this agnostic position or stance in regards to the existence of God, I became increasingly dissatisfied, unhappy with this position. I wasn't happy with saying, I don't know. I wanted to be more certain and be more sure. As a result of this increasing dissatisfaction with this position, it made me or facilitated me to think and question uh, the question of God once again. I decided that actually I would return to the initial belief I had when I was younger. I didn't think that it's rational or sensible that the entire universe and our existence could have been a result of random chance and I thought that the most sensible position as a result of that was to believe that there is a, a creator, a cause of our existence and that we actually have an objective purpose in our lives. Having arrived at the decision or come to the conclusion that I believe God is true and the cause of the universe, I decided that I wanted to follow God if you like or have a connection with this being behind uh, our existence. Being brought up in England and having this cultural background of uh, Christianity, being christened when I was younger and so on, uh, made me somewhat favour or uh, be slightly biased towards the Christian tradition. And as a result of that, I decided, well, if God exists, and because of my background, the only religion which I'm going to follow is Christianity. And so I decided, uh, with no real reason or evidence, to begin to practice the Christian tradition. Having accepted Christianity as a religion that I wanted to follow, I began to read the Bible regularly. I would read it most nights, and this would be the way in which I wanted to gain a closer connection to God and uh, to gain a better understanding of the Christian tradition. After a while of um, reading the Bible and um, affirming myself as a Christian, I started to attend the local church, um, which was very close to my house. Uh, I became very friendly with the people, and I started to learn more about what the church was teaching. Initially, uh, as a Christian, I believed that there is one God, God alone and no other. I did accept that Jesus was the Son of God because this was the term that was used in the Bible, but I didn't think that he was God as the church was teaching. So I was slightly confused when the church was saying that they believed that Jesus was God because when you look into the Bible, it, it's not saying this. After attending the church more regularly, I learned of a concept called 
the Trinity. The Trinity is uh, the doctrine that is accepted by the majority of Christians today. And this is that God is one, but in three persons. So when I came across this concept of the Trinity, I was very confused at first. I wasn't sure how you could make sense of saying that uh, God is one, but happens to be in three separate persons. How could this be? Because one and one and one doesn't equal one, it equals three. So to me, it didn't really make sense. But because this is what the church was saying and this is what Christianity was uh, preaching, and because I wanted to be a Christian, I decided, well, I'll accept this just the way it is. So I began to read the Bible more and more and I gained a better understanding of what Christianity meant the more I would read it. When I looked at the Bible and remember what the church were teaching me, I saw that this doesn't make sense. The two were conflicting and contradicting one another. So for example, Jesus would pray in, in the Bible. He prayed to God. He, frustrated his face on the floor as you'd see the Muslims do today. Now, if he's God, as the church was saying, or one person in the Trinity, uh, then why on earth would he be praying? Who would he be praying to? God doesn't pray to anybody. Uh, moreover, you would see that Jesus said regarding the Day of Judgment that nobody knows the Day of Judgment, not the angels, not the Son, who he would refer to himself in the Bible but only the Father. So he is saying only God knows the Day of Judgment, the time that it would occur. If he was God, then he would surely have to know uh, when this would occur. Even if we were to look at when Jesus was allegedly crucified on the cross, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So this is a man crying out uh, to God and never claiming himself to be God to be divine or to be one person in the Trinity. In fact, the Trinity, the word, is not once ever mentioned in the Bible. Due to this problem of being unable to reconcile the teaching of the church and the teaching of the Bible to make sense together, I came to the conclusion that the church and its teachings was wrong because it's going against the very text, the very uh, book that the whole church is based upon in the first place. Having reached this conclusion, I then began to, to question Christianity at all. I began to question the validity of the Bible and the claims that it would make about Jesus and so on. So, having started to question uh, Christianity more and more, and question the uh, divine nature of Jesus or the sonship of Jesus to God as it says in the Bible, I became very unsatisfied with this doctrine and this teaching. Because for example, uh, it wouldn't make sense to say that there is one God and that he could have a son. Uh, the example would be if you had a pet goldfish and you went around saying that this goldfish is your son. No one would take you seriously. Why? Because to something to be your son, it has to be of the same nature as you. And so, if you're going to say Jesus is the Son of God, that would mean he has to be of the same nature of God, and that creates the same problem we already had of the Trinity, because it seems now we have two gods, but this doesn't make sense. So, it was all a bit confusing, and it wasn't rational or based on any good reason, and as a result, I just couldn't accept this. So I decided, look, I believe in God. I know that God exists. This creation that we see around us could not have come together by chance. It had to have a cause of its existence and God is alone, he is one. So I wanted to know the truth. I wanted to worship God, to follow God, to be on the right path. Otherwise, what's the point in our existence? Our life is purposeless. We have no reason to exist other than to go around, have fun, get a job and so on and then ultimately we'll die. That was a, a ridiculous idea for me that this is all that life is. So I decided first and foremost to uh, look into Islam. Why? Well because 
pr uh, previously when I was a Christian, I had many uh, discussions and debates with my Muslim friends. And Islam was already something that I saw to be fairly appealing because it was rational, it makes, it makes sense of the nature of God to say that He's one, alone, not like the creation, transcendent, above and beyond it, and so on. This makes sense. And that He would send various prophets over time Abraham, Moses, Isaac, Jacob, Jesus, and finally Muhammad, peace be upon them all, uh, to different nations and different tribes and places. This was something that made sense and didn't create the confusion and the problems about the nature of God that we saw from the Christian tradition. Due to the initial attraction that I got from looking into the Islamic tradition through speaking with my friends, I decided that I want to look into this religion further. I wanted to see whether this religion wasn't just one that was appealing or made sense. I wanted to see, is this the truth? I believe Islam to be true for many, many different reasons. The first primary reason is about the nature of God. When we look at the universe, we know the universe, the world around us, began to exist. Therefore, it needs to have a cause of its existence. When we reflect on the nature of this cause, it must be transcendent, i.e. above and beyond the universe. It must have been powerful to bring the universe into existence. It must have been knowledgeable uh, because of the complexity and organization we see in the creation. All of these things, basically, when we use a name for the, all of this, this cause and all the different attributes it has, we would say God. In Arabic or in Islamic terms, we would say Allah. So that's the first reason. The second would be when we look into the Qur'an. The Qur'an Muslims believe to be the divine revelation from God. When we look at the historical context of the Qur'an's revelation, we know that this could not have been authored or devised by a human being. First of all is the literary linguistic challenge of the Qur'an. In the Qur'an it says, if you are in doubt about this book which we have sent down upon our servant, meaning the Prophet Muhammad upon him be peace, then produce just a single chapter like it. When we look into the Arabic language, all of the Arabic texts form into two main literary forms, poet, poetry and prose. Scholars, non-Muslim and Muslim, can now tell us that the Quran it transcends the very known forms of the Arabic language. It cannot be said to be prose nor poetry. It is something unique, it is something else. And therefore, it couldn't have been authored by a human being because it transcends the very nature of the language itself and therefore is miraculous from that perspective. Another reason would be that the Quran mentions things that couldn't have been known at that time. For example, in the 20th century, we discovered that the universe was expanding. This was mentioned in the Quran uh, 1,400 years ago. When we look uh, at the fact that the sun and the moon uh, and the earth orbit, this is again something we only found out in modern uh, astronomy. This was something that was mentioned in the Quran 1,400 years ago. And all of these many different points. The third point could be about the historical miraculousness of the Qur'an. For example, again, the Qur'an mentions things that we've only found out recently, 1,400 years ago. Interestingly, when we look into the Bible, at the time of the Prophet Moses, it says there was a Pharaoh. At the time of the Prophet Joseph, it also says there was a Pharaoh. Now, due to the discovery of hieroglyphics and these things, we found out that actually, at the time of uh, the prophet uh, Joseph, there was no such thing as a pharaoh. It's a king. Interestingly, in the Quran, when it refers to a pharaoh, it's talking about the time of Moses or Musa. But in, uh, when it talks about the story of Joseph or Yusuf, it uses the term king. So this couldn't have been known at that time because the hieroglyphics language was dead at that point. We've only found out recently that this was the case. So we can see again the Quran is mentioning something that could not have possibly been known to anybody at that time and therefore is a miracle again from that perspective. The fourth point 
is the mathematical coherence of the Quran. When we look into certain things, such as the amount of times the Quran says the word day or month or different things, we see something quite remarkable. For example, the word day is used in the Quran 365 times. There are 365 days in a year. The word month is used 12. There are 12 months in a year. Um, heaven and hell are used 77 times, exactly the same, uh, and many, many other things. So this is another thing that's remarkable about the Quran and is a signpost to the divine. Another point, uh, the fifth point, is that the Quran has never been changed. Uh, the scholars of the Qur'an, Muslim and non-Muslim, unanimously agree that the Qur'an has remained the same since it is revealed until this day and is memorized by millions of different people all around the world. So it's not something that could be changed. So if we were to throw all of the religious books into the ocean, there's only one book that we could get back in its entirety, it still be preserved, and that's the Qur'an because no one has memorized the Bible and these other books and even if they have they don't agree on which Bible anyway so this is another point the sixth point um, would be about the Prophet Muhammad upon whom be peace and his life when we look into his life and the way he lived we know that this man wasn't or didn't have the psychological profile of a liar he didn't have the profile of a deluded person he was truthful so the fact that we can rationally confirm he was telling the truth means that we know therefore he was a true prophet from God and that Islam is the truth. Another interesting point is that the Quran uh, predict, uh, predicted future events that took place. For example, the, there was a war between the Romans and the Persians and the Quran predicted uh, who would be victorious in this battle and it was proven to be true and so on. When we reflect upon all of these several different points, we can see that the Qur'an couldn't have been authored by a human being and must have been the result of God revealing this um, to the Prophet Muhammad and it literally being true and what it claims to be. So therefore, it makes sense to say that Islam is the truth, that the Qur'an is the word of God and that the Prophet Muhammad upon whom he is, is the messenger of God. To become Muslim is very easy and very simple. You just have to believe that there is only one God, that He alone should be worshipped, and that Muhammad is His final messenger. And you have to believe this, then declare it by saying, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, which translates as, I bear witness that there is no God except the one true God, and I bear witness that Muhammad is His messenger. Ha, ha, ha.